Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending February 16th. This show will be pretty much known as the Brian West Show. He was the winner of the Super Bowl pick, so I told him he got to choose the subject. So within less than 24 hours, he got back to me with an email saying he would like my review based on looking on the web of the NC700 Honda models the Honda motorcycle models that have the automatic and manual transmission, specifically the NC700 D, X, and S models. Well, we're going to do better than that. My buddy Brian, that used to own the Kawasaki dealer in Elgin, well, now he's also a Yamaha, Honda, and Ural dealer besides. So we're not just going to do it the easy way. We're going to go down and make a trip down to the Honda dealer and actually have... I have one of the people that work for him. is named Adam. I'm going to have him actually show me the X model. And it's kind of nice because the manufacturer suggested retail price at Brian's dealership, which he happens to be named Brian too, is uh, quite a bit less than the manufacturer's suggested retail price I found on the web. So not only is it a, a pretty cool bike, but he gives you some really good deals. Um, for some reason, they had a D model in storage. They were going to bring it up for me to look at, but since they had the X model available, um, we got into a little discussion, as you'll see here, uh, me and Adam, about the name of it. He did not know the name of it, and it's, it is called, I looked it up again, it is called the NC700D model, which I didn't look at. It's called the Intrepid, and I have seen all the way up to 2012 models of it. It does include a fairing, which uh, gives a little bit of a problem with legroom for bigger people. I will also give you a link below to a guy on YouTube that does a very good interview um, a very good review of the NC 700 D model so take a look at that it's it's short but it's very concise so anyway I'll just uh, jump ahead and let Adam and uh, let Adam show you what he showed me for the model at the Honda dealer shift you know, okay um, now so with the DCT model you have two modes you can switch from it's a okay. button on the handle grip here that you switch from automatic to manual um, when you're in the automatic mode, there's another button here that you would press that you can shift it from sport mode okay. or to drive mode. Uh, sport mode just lets the engine rev up a little bit higher. Yeah. And that drive, standard drive mode is just standard driving. And then they, there's another button here that shifts it into neutral when you come to a yeah. light. Now, the NC700D has underseat storage, right? No, they both. Oh, they both don't have underseat they're, storage? They're exactly the same bikes. The only yeah. difference is the handlebars. Oh, okay. The hand. So. The hand and it also there. uses the uh, car engine, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. And so there's actually storage here. You can fit a full face helmet in this section here. Oh, there is. Could I actually take a look at that? Yeah. Let me go see if I can grab the okay. keys for you. Thank you. My name is Adam, by the way. Adam, nice to meet you. My name is Chuck. Chuck, nice I've to been, meet you. I've been doing uh, business with Brian for a long, long time. Okay. Fantastic. Well, let me grab the keys. Okay. Let me see if I can track him down. Actually. Okay. So this is similar to the NC700D model, which the D is more like the scooter model. And here is the engine. It has the transmission with the ability to do either automatic or manual. It's the NC. I believe there is the NC700X and S also besides the NC700D. Which it's actually what it's what's the name of the NC seven hundred D? It's uh, Intrepid or um, no? It's actually uh, just the NC seven hundred X. Yeah. Or the NC seven hundred X DCT. Okay. So there's no. Uh, no, but I mean the other scooter model, the D model. They call it something else. They call it the Intrepid or something. Isn't the name for it? No, not no, that I know. No, it doesn't. No. Okay. <laughs> well, anyway, here is the storage so on it. Full storage compartment there. You can fit just most full size helmets in there. Okay, most full size know. helmets. Um, and then if I twist this the other way, or let me see. The D looks more like a scooter, though, whereas this one looks more like a motorcycle, right? Or do they both look about the same? The, the automatic model looks exactly the same. Oh, okay. Price ways. Let's see. Manufacturer suggested sixty nine ninety nine. Now that's not so bad because the uh, DN model used to be quite pricey to get right. the automatic transmission on the right. DN type of and model. So the automatic bikes. So this is the standard. I don't yeah. know Why the seat's not popping up for me? Normally the seat pops up. Yeah. Have to have the guys and there's a little bit of storage in that. There actually. That's where you actually fill up the gas tank. There's a. Oh, the gas tank gas is in there. Right okay. In there. So the gas tank sits right under the driver here. Oh. Okay. 
You know, believe it or not, that's a problem I had. And my Kawasaki Vulcan is trying to get the seat to release Normally with the key. Normally, it works super easy. I don't know why yeah. it's not popping for me right now. But, um, now, is this the first one you've gotten in of this model? Have you sold very many no, of them? No, I've actually sold three already. Three already you've sold yeah, of it, yeah. yeah that, have. But then the, uh, yeah, like I was saying, that standard, that automatic version yeah. just doesn't have a clutch lever, doesn't have a shifter on that foot. Um, it's also got push button uh, paddle shifters. Okay. So you can shift it up or down. Oh, so this one you hand. actually have a clutch you can use then, yeah, right? Okay. Exactly, exactly. So those are just some of the subtle differences. Yep. yep. Okay. But everything else looks exactly the same. Okay. Yeah. And I do have a sale price on that, um, on the automatic version right yeah. now. This one I've actually got on sale at sixty three ninety nine. Oh, okay. And the automatic, I think I'll double check, but we get that sixty nine ninety nine on that okay. one. Okay. Do you have a brochure available on this one? Um, we don't necessarily have one okay. specifically for this model, but I can give you um, one of these brochures. This is a full Honda lineup brochure. Okay. That's in here. So anyway, that was the uh, demo that Adam showed me. The engine itself is split in half from a uh, 1.5 liter engine that Honda makes. It's called the Honda Fit. I guess now they even make all-electric models of versions of it, but for the ones that have the gasoline engine, you're actually in that motorcycle getting exactly one half of a Honda Fit engine. And uh, I hope you enjoyed that review. Um, that's everything I can think of right now about the NC700D. The load, oh, one, one other thing I want to add, I did look up the load capacity, and they added an additional... 30 pounds load capacity compared to the um, DN1 model, which was kind of low. So that would mean that two, I'd say average to small size individuals could probably take along 90 or 100 extra pounds on the bike, or if you're just one medium sized individual, you could still take along a lot of weight. So the total weight capacity is 390 pounds. So that would be maybe uh, uh, 300 pounds of passenger, 90 pounds of luggage or whatever. So that's pretty decent. And uh, before I go, I would also like to mention the uh, meteor bolide it's actually called when you actually hear the sound of a meteor but they more than heard the sound they got a shock wave over the urals in, in um, uh, what used to be the soviet union russia um, like i've been saying in a lot of tdd reports in the past we're spending way too little money where we should be spending a lot more and have a lot more staff on guard because it's the one preventable thing once we get the engineering down there's no reason why especially for small meteors small asteroids we could not change their direction before they get anywhere close to the earth so I think we're maybe getting a few fortunate warning shots here and uh, we need to take heed and do something about it in the future so anyway that's it for this week everybody take care I will catch you next week <laughs>